beyond the body. And the body is a limit imposed on the universal communication that is an eternal property of mind. But the communication is internal. Mind reaches to itself. It does not go out. Within itself, it has no limits and there is nothing outside it. It, is, it encompasses you entirely, you within it and it within you. There is nothing else anywhere or ever. Did you skip a sentence? There's a lot more in the new book. In the new book? Yeah, yeah they put a whole other sentence in there. There's a few more sentences. Oh, well, please tell us about it. <laughs> <laughs> tell us, wait till you hear this. <laughs> Yet only thus can you escape. The home of vengeance is not yours. The place you set aside to house your hate is not a prison, but an illusion of yourself. The body is a limit imposed on the universal communication that is an eternal property of mind. But the communication is internal. Mind reaches to itself. It is not made up, not in italics, made up of different parts which reach each other. It does not go out. Within itself, it has no limits, and there is nothing outside it. It encompasses everything. It encompasses you entirely, you within it, and it within you. There is nothing else, anywhere or ever. And I think with that, I mean, that's kind of like giving us a sense of mind. And then the very next sentence, he contrasts it with the body. The body is outside you, and but seems to surround you, shutting you off from others, and keeping you apart from them. It is not there. It, it, it paints this picture of the mind, and then kind of like on the surface of the mind, you know, where all the projections are, where all the, the attack thoughts and the projections are like way on the outside. And he's saying the body is outside you. But through the experience of the deceived mind, it seems to be wrapped around. You know, it seems to be like consciousness is somewhere like in the mind, in the head, looking out through these eyes, or, you know, different people have different experiences. <coughs> yeah, that's because we get the mind mixed up with the brain stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And so now, tell me again what it's, because I mean, yeah. So what is the real, <laughs> what's the real story about the brain and the mind stuff, right? I, I mean, well, I know that the real story is that the mind is really not, right, I mean, it's not the brain, it's not in the brain, it's not in the body. It's that, I think the best analogy that the Course uses over and over is that the dreamer is a dream. And we were watching a movie the other day and Beverly went, she said, I was just reading the Course and I just got something that I never got before. She said, I used to think of the script and everything with all these other people and things out there, but I always didn't include this <laughs> in it. And she said, but this is on out there too, kind of like, you know. I mean, that, that to me is, is the best analogy of the mind in the sense of a dreamer of a dream is watching all the characters, including <laughs> this, this character. Yeah, including this character so on the screen. The mind is, tell me again what you just read, that it was telling us the mind is. It, it's, it has no reference point in this world. It does not go out. Where it, is my mind? <laughs> <laughs> it's everywhere. It's everywhere. Yeah. It's everywhere. Or the even mind the, of God. In everything. Another way you can right. think about it is, is mind is so expansive that there's no limits. It's just, it, but that everywhere, or place even, that when we ask the question, where is it, the place is a concept. And so we could say that place is a concept in the split mind. That only, only a split mind, only a deceived mind could ever have such a crazy idea. As that place. mind is in here. Well, you start using well, shorter words. Where that's anywhere. <laughs> If you start using shorter sentences, you just say, mind is. <laughs> but the it defies location. <laughs> it says here, his kingdom has no limits, this, this is in chapter 16, his kingdom has no limits and no end, and there is nothing in him that is not perfect and eternal. All of this is you, italicized, and nothing outside of this is you. And somewhere else it says that there is nothing outside of you. Mm -hmm. And here it says the body is outside of you, and obviously that means the body is nothing, because there is nothing outside of us. Yeah. Even the body is not outside of us. There's, there's nothing outside of us, because we are minds. We're, we're looking we're at minds. a bunch of stick figures. We're all of it. Yeah. Just, you know, it's like I kind of, we're having this nightmare, okay? 
And we've got this etcher sketch, and we're sitting there drawing these <laughs> stick figures. Oh, this one gets burned up in the car ride. Oh, no, you know, and this one does this to this one. Oh, you dirty rat, you know, what's going on? But it's just us and the guilt that we're feeling guilty because we think that we could get away from God, and we're just playing with this, you know, until we can get, not really playing, but having a slight nightmare, until we can just take our hands away from the controls and say, oh, I didn't do it. I was just reading the, the section in the course today called The Basis of the Dream. And basically, you know, we're talking about nighttime dreams and daytime dreams and, you know, they're just different in form. But basically it was saying you assign the, the script, so you assign the roles to everybody, to all the parts, you know, that everyone seems to play. And that, I mean, that transfers later on in the sections, Hero of the Dream and Dreamer of the Dream, to, I mean, that's, what we've done, in a sense, that's part of that's when the script was written. That all the parts were assigned, and and everybody's just playing the part. It's, that's the problem of it, is assigning the roles, because every time we hate somebody, we believe that they're not fulfilling the role the way we want the role to be fulfilled. Whether it's in a relationship, whether it's in a work situation, you know, that's not the way. You're not supposed to do that here, you know, or. Because I assigned you a certain role, and you're not doing it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't Savior. <laughs> you know, in a sense, the Course is saying that, that really, you know, a metaphor for the role that they have is they're always our Savior. You know? <laughs> when, when it's a different role, like, no, you're my daughter, or you're my wife, or my husband, or my boss, and you are supposed to act this way, you're supposed to give me a certain thing, you know? The mind, it's like when it, the reason it produced all these forms and everything is it's trying, still trying to use relationships to the seed mind to take vengeance out for the past. It really believes that it was deprived in the past. And it believes, and it's therefore attracted to, to persons and situations that it's that attraction to guilt, where, where these are people that I want to fulfill roles and needs that I was deprived of in the past. And it never works, you know. The whole deprivation is a scam. But it's like as long as we set people up to be God substitutes and we have all these expectations to try to to fulfill these roles and expectations, of course there's going to be fury and anger when they don't seem to, to fit the bill, you know. Well, it's just like another of the myriad ways of making sure, quote, sure, that we stay in ego. In other words, yeah. the ego is one nasty decision, just one. And there's just so many ways that we stay attracted to staying in that thought because of our belief that we are the ego and the fear that love, since we are the ego, will swallow us up, which is just... Well, you know, the ego is an illusion. It, it, it's a fear of thought that's come and gone. But the, the only thing, what the ego does to get a better awareness of it is it tries to weaken you, okay, either by uh, separation or by trying to convince you that you are weak or no good, okay? Because without that thought, you would remember who you are. So that's the purpose behind everything. And you can, if you see thoughts that are going on or seem to be going on all the time, everything with the ego is trying to weaken you or separate you. <coughs> and it's a, if you're just getting into this, it's a good identification to see, well, what those particular thoughts are trying to do. It's either weaken you or separate you. And that's what it seems to have done. Okay. It's, yeah, it's, it's scary. It's like bringing it down to, you know, my experience is like, it's scary to be joyful because, you know, I, I suddenly was thinking today about how I really wasn't very fond of that be happy guy <laughs> when it first happened. Yeah. And now, yeah. what? Now they appear. Yeah, no, not the song. There's a there's a guy who's in coarse circles who has yeah. this thing called be happy. It's a program. Doctor happiness. Doctor happiness. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Calvin Stein's. Mm -hmm. No, it's a different guy. Um, but anyway, I was just thinking, well, that's it. I mean, I'm scared to be happy. I am attracted to misery. And, you know, it's starting to change a little bit. But it's like once we're happy, it's like 
hold it, what are you doing happy? Or what are you doing joyful and at peace? You need to stay miserable because that's reality. As soon as you get happy, somebody's going to come along and he's going to burst your bubble. And then who's going to be the fool? I mean, to me, that demonstrates an attraction to pain. It's almost like, too, if, if you have to, to disidentify from the, apart from the ego, you have to have a sense of what, how does the ego think? I mean, that's why I see all these sections on the laws of chaos and so on and so forth, where Jesus is like, this is what you believe. You believe this, you believe this, you believe this, you believe this. You know, you, you may laugh at me and say, this is ridiculous, but brother, <laughs> the reason the ground is you know, walking on seems pain. solid yeah. is because you believe these. Brother, you do believe these, he kind of says at one point, you know. But it's like, the forms, there's so many myriads of forms that, that seem to obscure the content or just the basic the way that the ego is thinking. You know, like you're saying, separate or weaken. The ego, you know, it's like all these forms try to make it to be this mirage of complexity to keep obscure these basic ways of thinking. And as soon as we can get in touch with these basic backwards, I call them, ways of thinking, you know, which is what the ego is, then we can tease tease out or we can actually start to feel a sense of something that's apart from these thoughts. Because while they're swirling in our minds and we feel, you know, we, we feel the feelings and we, we, we think the thoughts, you know, there's such a still a strong belief that the thoughts are really real. And they're my thoughts. And Jesus is saying, no, <laughs> those, those are outside you. Those aren't who you are. I think when you were talking about Dr. Happiness, too, it reminded me of this section in the course called The Immediacy of Salvation. And one of those lines in there that really gets me every time I read it is, you know, be not content with future happiness. Well, most of the time, you know, the way people say, I'm on a spiritual journey. I'm glad I have the Course in Miracles now. I'm certainly not there now. Another year. <laughs> but another year, maybe another 10 years, maybe another set of lifetimes or 10 lifetimes or so. But, you know, it's like, and then you get a sentence like, be not content with future happiness, you know, yeah. that don't, okay, now don't project this out into the future. Don't project the salvation even out right. into the just, future. It's yeah. just another excuse for yeah. not being happy right for now. Right now, right. And you start to say, oh, because that seems such a widely uh -huh. accepted, like, we're on a journey, we're all going to make it, and it's, 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 gonna, it's in the future, yeah. and it's not, but it's like, I like those sections because it just says, like, you weren't, you weren't deprived in the past. If you're feeling upset, it's a present decision. It has nothing at all to do with anything that seemed to happen in the past. It has everything to do with your interpretation. Right now. Right now. And also, don't project your worry and your anxiety off into the events that you're afraid are going to happen in the future that you don't like. Bring it back. It's a present yeah. decision right now. And he says, you really believe that there's a gap between the time that you forgive and the time that you'll receive the, the gifts of forgiveness. It's like that's the gap that you're talking about, the fear of the mind. And if I totally, if I, if I follow you, Jesus, you know, the, the, the rage of the world is going to rest on me. Right. There'll be chaos. There'll be chaos because, you know, this is the way I've survived, this is the way I've functioned, and you're telling me to be totally defenseless? You know, I know a lot of people have said, you know, do you know about this place? He's <laughs> defenseless in this place. But it's like, yeah, that, that's the whole key. It's just, yeah. just totally... There is sacrifice made possible by the idea that I could receive the benefits. There should, could be a space of time between them. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Right. You work, you work all year, and the only thing that you're looking forward to is sitting on a beach in the Bahamas, okay? And that's where you put your happiness, okay? And the whole year, that's what you've got in your mind, two weeks in the Bahamas. I can go through <coughs> this because I have, quote unquote, two weeks, <laughs> two weeks in the Bahamas, you know. Yeah. And, and there you are. You're miserable for 50 weeks, okay? Who knows what happens with your two weeks in the Bahamas. It may rain. It may have a hurricane. But that's there you are. You know, you gave it up. In that movie, so, Sleepless in Seattle, it's like yeah. the whole movie yeah. was, I mean, I know that maybe... That wasn't, I think Jenny didn't see it this way, but the whole movie, um, I don't know how many of you all saw it, is 
it's, it's kind of wrapped up in, it's about, I, I'm trying to see if I can tell it without, because you decide to see it. But anyway, the whole movie is about special love relations.